in today's class we will be discussing about the lung ultrasound the blue protocol blue is basic lung ultrasound in emergency and uh, we will discuss about how we report whether we report it as an a profile b profile or a c profile so first before defining we should understand what are the uh, major points that need to be scanned these are known as the blue points and that where these blue points were uh, were uh, described by Lichtenstein in his paper lung ultrasound for critically ill so for that we have to keep the both the palms excluding the thumbs over the chest of the patient as shown in the diagram the upper part of the hand should touch the lower part of the clavicle so the hand of the this hands which is which we are placing over the chest should match the size of the hands of the patient so these hands indicate the lung of the patient so the lower part of the hand indicates the diaphragm so this after putting the hands like this we define the blue points so the hands are placed excluding the thumbs and the hands are same should be same as patient's hand size and upper hand should be touching the lower end of clavicle and hands corresponds to the position of the lung so what is upper blue point upper blue point is the middle of the upper hand and lower blue point is middle of the lower palm and the third point is known as the plaps point what is plaps plaps is posterior lateral alveolar pleural syndrome and this is the point where we look for mostly for consolidation and pleural effusions so plaps point is found out by drawing a horizontal line along the lower blue point and a vertical line through the posterior axillary line and the point at which these two lines intersect is a plaps point. And another important thing is the lower end of the hand we have already said that uh, correspond with the diaphragm of the patient. So these are the blue points and how we mark the blue points before doing the ultrasound. So in a normal patient. So before that we will talk about what are the props that can be used. We can use linear probe of 8 to 12 megahertz to, to scan the anterior lung to see the lung sliding and all. And we use 3 to 5 megahertz curvilinear probe to see deeper structures, to see consolidations and effusions uh, and to scan the plaps point we use a curvilinear probe. And usually in the anterior chest to see the lung sliding pneumothorax and all we use the linear, linear probes of 8 to 12 megahertz so what is a normal lung ultrasound looks like so when you put the probe we see the uh, the in the first diagram is what we see normally so there will be ribs and in between the ribs the we will see the lungs so below the ribs there will not be any echoic area so this is an unechoic area because the ribs will reflect all the ultrasound waves so on both sides of the ribs there will be unechoic area and the central part we see the lung tissue. And uh, these, the upper arrow indicates the ribs, ribs, ribs margin and below that about 0.5 cm below it we see a hyperechoic line that is known as the pleural line. Usually it, in, it, is, it is indicating of parietal pleura and below that we see the lung actually and in this in this lung we can see parallel lines parallel uh, lines which are parallel to the pleural line and they are reverberation artifacts of the pleural line and these are known as A lines. So this much things we will see in a normally when we put the probe over the normal healthy lung. So we see the ribs pleural line and multiple parallel lines parallel to the pleural line these are known as A lines. So this unechoic area below the pleura is known as the Merlin space. So here when we see this area we can see that the ribs are seen like this and the pleural line is 0.5 cm below it we see the pleural line like this and this is, looks like a bat and hence it is known as bat sign. So bat sign is an indicating of a normal lung ultrasound. 
So here as we have discussed the vertical arrows indicates the rib shadow. Horizontal big arrows are plural lines about 0.5 cm below the rib line. And plural line indicate the parietal pleura in all the cases. And in this we see bad sign. That is the association of ribs and plural line make a solid landmark called the bad sign. And horizontal small arrows are A lines which are multiple lines seen parallel to the plural line which are reverberation artifacts. And this A lines, what is the significance? If we are seeing A lines, that indicates that it is air which is below the pleura. So, when in this, uh, in this, uh, in this uh, frame, if we put M mode, we see this one, this diagram. That is, this is known as the seashore sign. So, we are seeing one stratified area followed by a hyperechoic line and below with a sandy area. So, this hyperechoic line is known as the, this is a plural line. And if we are seeing this, this hyperechoic line indicates that it has both the parietal and the visceral pleura. Because there is no collection between the parietal and visceral pleura. If there is some collection, we will not see the seashore. Or if there is a air, parietal and visceral pleura will get separated. And the normal underlying lung tissue won't be seen. So, we won't see the seashore sign. So, seashore sign indicates that the plural line is has both the visceral and the parietal pleura. And this indicates that is the upper part which is stratified is the motionless chest wall and the lower sandy area is the sliding lung tissue. So, this indicates that the lung moves at the chest wall. Above the plural line it is a stratified motionless chest wall and below is the lung sliding which has a sandy pattern. So, this is the seashore sign. So, in a normal lung ultrasound, we see bad sign and seashore sign and multiple A lines. So, what is A profile? A profile of lung is a normal lung ultrasound in which we see lung sliding which is indicated by seashore sign in M mode plus A lines. And when lung sliding plus A lines is present, we report the lung ultrasound as A profile. And this is rec recorded in the uh, upper and the lower uh, blue points. If it is seeing this, we indicate this right, we write as, uh, we have to report at each of the point, A, uh, blue point 1, blue point 2 and a plaps point. So, we re report at each of these areas. So, it is A profile means A lines plus lung sliding is present. So, now we go into what are B lines. B lines indicate of interstitial problems, interstitial syndromes. Like if there is a pulmonary edema or if there is interstitial pneumonia or if there is lung fibrosis. So, then B lines will appear. So, what is the definition of B lines? B line is always a comatal artifact and it always arises from the plural line. And it should always move in concert with the lung sliding. It is almost always long, well-defined, laser-like, hyperechoic and they erases the A lines. And it almost reach up to the lower part of the screen. So, this B lines arises because there is so much of water in between the in lung parenchyma that is in the interstitium. So, the ultrasound waves are simultaneous, ultrasound waves are hitting simultaneously the air and water. As there is, uh, for example, if there is a subpleural interlobular septa edema is there, then this uh, uh, ultrasound uh, simultaneously touch the air and water and that creates the B lines. So, it should always uh, start from the uh, pleural line and should move with the lung sliding and it erases the A lines and they are well defined laser like. So, this is the definition of B lines. So, Normally, in a normal healthy lung, if we put the probe, if we see up to two B lines, then it is not significant. It is normal to visualize two B lines per scan in healthy lung. So, if there is three or more B lines, then they are known as lung rockets. If we see three or more B lines between two ribs, that is in one lung, one, when you put the probe, you see two ribs. You have to see in between the two ribs the underlying lung. In that, you see two uh, uh, two B lines it is normal. If you are seeing three or more then it is indicating of lung rockets and it indicates that if there is, if there is interstitial edema. 
and the three or four these interstitial lung rockets indicate that is corresponds to the curly B lines in X-ray. And if it is like six to eight, then it indicates uh, alveolar edema. That is ground glassing will appear. So these are ground glass B lines. So in the second diagram, one is lung rockets and second one is the ground glass B areas. So that indicates a more edema. That is alveolar edema has appeared. So in the blue protocol, only the androlateral lung rockets are considered because posterolaterally when the patient is lying supine due to gravity there will be some uh, what uh, more gravity dependent uh, collection of uh, um, interstitial edema will be more in the gravity dependent posterior parts so we report only in the anterior part b lines we see posterior uh, segment of the lung if we are seeing b lines it is not uh, reported in blue protocol so in this diagram 1 and 2 are indicating pulmonary edema and here we can see there are no a lines in both the diagrams and in the third diagram, we can see A line and also we see some vertical lines. But these are not B lines. They are Z lines. Just for comparison. These are parasites are ill-defined short and they do not erase the A lines. So to report it as a B line, we should perfectly see up to the lower part of the screen like a laser hyperechoic projection. So if there are B lines, it can be due to um, interstitial lung disease, it can be due to ARDS or it can be due to a cardiogenic edema. So how we differentiate between them? So in cardiogenic edema and diffuse parenchymal lung disease, these B lines are homogeneous distribution will be seen. While in ARDS, it is non-homogeneous distribution of B lines. So how we differentiate between cardiogenic edema and diffuse uh, parenchymal lung disease? By seeing the pleura. So, if the underlying pleura is thickened, that indicates there is parenchymal lung disease. And if the pleura is thin, it is cardiogenic edema. And in cardiogenic edema, there will be normal lung sliding and there will be bilateral pleural effusion associated because of the cardiogenic edema. In ARDS, in addition to this non-homogeneous distribution and irregular thickened pleura, there will be subpleural and posterior consolidations. So, this is how we differentiate lung ultrasound wise cardiogenic edema ARDS and diffuse parenchymal lung diseases so now we have already discussed A profile so what is B profile B profile indicates that is there is anterior lung sliding along with the lung rockets are seen so that indicates the B profile B profile indicates that there is interstitial edema is there so we report blue protocol as B profile lung means interstitial edema is there Next is lung consolidations. So these are fluid disorders or bacterial uh, consolidations. And uh, this consolidation in 98% of the cases will touch the, uh, the chest wall. That is reach up to the pleural line. And most of them, 90% of them we locate at the, at the plaps point. And these consolidations can involve the whole lobe or a part of the lobe. That is it can be translobar or a non-translobar. So in the first diagram we can see this whole tissue is looking like a, this area is looking like spleen. So it is like a tissue like appearance is seen. So this is full lobe is involved and this posterior line is indicating in the mediastinal boundary. So this is the tissue sign which is seen in a translobar consolidation. And this is only a part of the lobe that is non-translobar consolidation uh, in which only part of the lobe is consolidated. And in that, the underlying lung border is irregular. So, this is like shred of tissues we are seeing. And this is known as the fractal sign, a fractal line that is irregular. Uh, the border between the consolidated lung and the aerated lung is irregular. And this is drawing the fractal line. So, this is known as the shred sign or fractal sign. So, these two signs both has 90% sensitivity and 98% specificity. So, in lung consolidation, we have uh, tissue sign, then it is a large area consolidation, stretch sign or fractal sign, small tra non translobar consolidations. So, what then? Now, we will discuss what is C profile. C profile indicates anterior lung consolidation regardless of size and number. So, if there is a consolidation we are seeing in lung ultrasound, it is C profile. And a thick and irregular pleural line is an equivalent. If you are not able 
uh, to see any uh, underlying uh, fractal sign or if there is uh, or any tissue sign but there is a thick and irregular plural line it will also indicate a C profile lung. So we have discussed A profile, B profile and a C profile lung. In addition to this there is A dash profile. A dash profile is there are A lines without lung sliding. And B dash profile means there are B lines without lung sliding. So this is in short how you report as A profile, B profile and a C profile lung in lung ultrasound. Thank you.